Hello and welcome, my name is Chelsea, I am insatiably curious, so I'm gonna learn some stuff and bring you along with me, just in case you wanted to learn something too. This video has been sitting in my subscription feed for a few days now, I'm finally getting around to watching it. It is The Last Human, A Glimpse into the Far Future, from Kurzgesagt in a nutshell. Just before we get into it, I am sorry if the reflection on my glasses kind of bothers you. Um, I kind of like being able to see clearly and I can't wear contacts without wanting to gouge out my own eyes, so I'm um, just gonna have to put up with this, I'm sorry. Alrighty, let's go. The future of humanity seems insecure. Rapid climate change, political division, our greed and failings. These videos are always so beautifully animated. I love so how much effort and um, attention to detail sight. they put into them. But humans have always thought they lived in the end times. Every generation assumes they're important enough to witness the apocalypse, and then life just goes on. This yeah, is a problem. That's a, that's a fair point, actually. We, we don't have the best track record when it comes to predicting the end of the world, so... <laughs> because it leads to short-term thinking and prevents us from creating the best world for ourselves and our descendants. What makes this worse is that we may actually be living at an extremely critical moment in human history. To understand why, let's look at the temporal window of humanity and ask, when will the last human be born? And how many people will there ever be? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> These sorts of estimates come with a lot of uncertainties, so please take them with a gigantic grain of salt. To get a sense of how many people there will be, let's see how many people have already lived. Modern humans arose some 200,000 years ago. They were uniquely good at making tools, telling stories, thinking abstractly, planning and working together in large groups beyond their close family. Still, there were not that many of us. Surpluses of food were scarce, survival was hard, life expectancy was low. It took us 150,000 years to grow to a population of 2 million. Improvements were gradual and eventually led to the agricultural revolution, arguably the biggest change in our history. Yeah, 100%. This was when I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, everything that we have today, all of the advancements and developments that we've made, um, civilization would not be what it is without the agricultural revolution. Of course, the agricultural revolution meant that we could produce enough food to sustain a significantly larger population, but it also meant that we could produce a greater quantity of food using fewer people. And so because food production was no longer this all hands on deck type of ordeal, you end up with these kind of spare people, some leftovers. Um, and of course they need to fill their time somehow. So they explore and experiment and um, develop new crafts and technologies, which are further uh, refined and developed over time and um, yeah that's essentially how we got here today <laughs> so yes agricultural revolution is major our numbers really started growing it took 10,000 more years to get to 300 million but that increase was dwarfed by the industrial revolution in 1800 there were a billion of us the human population doubled in just 120 years and then again the steepness in of that incline though today damn. we number around 8 billion in total over the last 200,000 years about 117 billion humans were born and lived and 109 billion also died which means that about 7% of all humans that ever lived are alive right now as many Holy. as were born in the first 150,000 years of human history that's nuts. Putting it into perspective like that is nuts. I mean, our species has existed for, as they said, about 200,000 years. Some sources say 300,000. It's up for debate. But to think that 7% of all of the humans, or at least Homo sapiens, that have ever existed are currently alive today, that is ridiculous. Every minute, 270 babies join the party. Ooh. That's a lot but of But there aren't just more people. Never before have we been as healthy and well off or lived longer. With growing living standards, our birth rates collapsed. The UN estimates that around the year 2100, we will hit our population peak and there will be 125 million people born each year. It's pretty unlikely that birth rates will stay stable forever, but let's pretend to make our thought experiment simpler. How many people there will be in the future depends on when our species will die out. And here, we find a lot of uncertainties. We are able to destroy ourselves through our own inventions, 
but we are also able to find solutions to avert catastrophic risk. We can change the direction of planet killer asteroids, but we've also invented nuclear weapons. We discovered antibiotics, but also carry diseases across the globe in a matter of days. Our industrial system gives us an incredible standard of living, but also changed the atmosphere in the process. It's very hard to say yeah, if human... I mean, uh, it seems as if for every helpful technology that we create, we also seem to create a, another technology or perhaps just an adaptation or variation of that same technology that ends up being detrimental to humans. That's not always intentional. You know, we're not always going out there deliberately trying to destroy each other. Sometimes it just ends up as the uh, the byproduct of some other action. But it kind of begs the question how much of these developments are genuine progress and how much of it is self-sabotage, either intentional or unintentional. Ingenuity will prolong atmosphere in the process. It's very hard to say if human ingenuity will prolong or shorten our species' lifespan. If things go badly, our end could come suddenly. But if we manage to avoid that, we could conceivably stick around for a long time. So every day we don't destroy ourselves may mean life for an unfathomable number of humans. How many people are we talking about? It depends on how far our species is going to expand. Scenario 1. Humans will never leave Earth. If we stay on our home planet, a good metric to look at is the extinction rate of animals that we get from the fossil record. The average lifespan of mammalian species is in the region of 1 million years, with some surviving up to 10 million years. Our close relative Homo erectus survived for about 1.9 million years. Let's be conservative and assume that humans will survive for a million years, which leaves us 800,000 more years to dawdle away. Assuming a stable... Mm, I mean, I am no expert, so take everything I say with a grain of salt, but... I'm not convinced that um, that other mammalian species that preceded us, I'm not sure that they are the best point of reference when it comes to predicting how long humans could potentially exist for, because the, uh, the thing that kind of distinguishes us from other mammals is that, uh, as far as I'm aware, other mammals do not actively, deliberately uh, destroy the habitat they rely on, especially not to such a severe extent. So, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a, a fair reference. Birth rate of 125 million people each year, this means there are roughly 100 trillion humans waiting to be born. 850 times greater than the number of people that have ever lived. This would make everybody alive today only 0.008% of all people that will ever live. Think about where this leaves you. Instead of putting you at the end of the chaotic mess that was our past, it would mean you live at the very beginning of something big. The start of the human story rather than the end. Doesn't this feel incredibly different? And now, consider that this may be an extremely pessimistic estimate. If we match the survival time of the most successful mammals, then our future numbers rise to 1.2 quadrillion people that have yet Holy to be born. Shit. And even this seems far from oh, our potential. No. As the sun slowly gets hotter and brighter, Earth will remain habitable for about 500 million years, giving so many more potential people the chance to become actual people. And now, let's begin to think big. Scenario 2 humans will leave earth we went from humans worshiping the moon it is interesting to put into perspective uh homo sapiens have only existed for about 200 maybe 300,000 years again that's up for debate but in the grand scheme of things that's a very small amount of time considering the planet is what four and a half billion years old so we have existed for a teeny teeny tiny fraction of um of how long this planet has existed so we have come so far in that relatively small period of time and we've achieved so much we've learned so much um, and the rate of of development and advancements is only growing like it's just getting more and more rapid every year realistically we cannot even begin to imagine what's going to be possible in a thousand years time or ten thousand years or a hundred thousand or five hundred thousand years time i mean i guess it's kind of contradictory to uh to try to imagine things that aren't even comprehensible to us yet but yeah anyway <laughs> humans will leave earth 
we went from humans worshipping the moon to humans walking on it. So who knows how much further we can go? If we don't die out within the next few hundred years, ideas that seem outlandish right now become serious considerations. Yeah. <laughs> if we believe that we have a chance of surviving for maybe millions of years, then we could expand onto the other planets or into our own artificial worlds. Life needs three things, a surface, resources, and energy. Our yes. sun provides Ooh. energy. Oh, that is a good way of framing it. Let's get that up again. A surface, Ooh. resources, and energy. Yes. Thank you. Um, so quite often we hear this argument of in order for a planet to be able to sustain life, it needs to be, you know, within a certain temperature range and receive a specific amount of light and it needs to have water and oxygen and yada, yada, yada. On this planet, that's what life needs. I mean, even then, there are several species that don't need all of those things, but that's a whole nother conversation. The conditions that sustain life on this planet are not necessarily universal. Life forms on this planet require, you know, certain resources and certain conditions because that's what we evolved to require based on what was available. So I think this idea of a planet has to be really similar to Earth in order for it to be capable of sustaining life, I think that's very closed-minded and kind of ignores how evolutionary biology works, <laughs> but yeah. Our sun provides energy for billions of years, and there is so much water and material floating in the asteroid and Kuiper belt that we could sustain many times our current population. Instead of living on planets, we could decide to construct our own artificial worlds and habitats. With resources and energy so abundant, we could try out different types of society and ways of life. An interconnected civilization spanning the solar system would create the basis of existence for an absurd number of individuals, orders of magnitude more than if we stick oh, to Earth, even oh. if we only existed for a few million oh, years. This future doesn't Oof. have to be grim and dark as science fiction likes to paint it. With quadrillions of people waiting to be born, we will have billions of doctors working on curing cancer, billions of problem solvers working on ending poverty, and billions of video game developers making life fun. More humans may actually mean more progress. Another upside of leaving Earth and spreading out is that it becomes much harder for us to become extinct as you need a solar system-wide catastrophe to catch everybody. So aside yeah, from nearby true. supernovae or gamma ray bursts, humanity would be relatively safe from extinction, maybe for billions of years. If we manage to survive for that long, slow evolution or genetic engineering might split us into multiple species, or we might intentionally keep ourselves the same as we are now. So to account for that, we'll just talk about people from now on, instead of humans. Okay, now let's think really big. Scenario three, people leave the solar system. As enormous as the solar system is, it is just one star system among billions in the Milky Way. If future people can colonize, say, 100 billion stars and live there for 10 billion years, with each generating 100 million births per year, then we can expect something like a hundred octillion oh, lives yeah. to be lived in the future. This is a one with 29 zeros, a hundred thousand <gasps> oh trillion trillion. Make it we can spin this up as much as we like. <laughs> the Andromeda galaxy will merge with the Milky Way. I mean, I don't... I don't know, will humans ever leave this solar system? It seems pretty damn impossible, but I guess as we both mentioned earlier, things that seem impossible now or things that aren't even comprehensible to us at the moment um, could be very viable possibilities in the future. So who knows? What do you think? Let me know. Adding another trillion stars for us Let's to set. The Andromeda galaxy will merge with Same. the Milky Way, adding another trillion stars for us to settle. Red dwarfs stay active for up to a trillion years, and future civilizations might even find energy for their habitats around black holes. A sufficiently advanced civilization of our descendants might even try to reach other galaxy groups. While these numbers are mind-blowing, they may underestimate the number of unborn people by many orders of magnitude. If we divide the total energy available in a galaxy oh, by the more. average energy needs of a single person, <laughs> then we get a tree to oh. potential lives. A million, trillion, trillion, trillion potential people. I mean, that, that number is too big for us to even understand. Our, our silly little animal brains cannot comprehend a number of that magnitude. So, oh my God. 
Hopefully, what's become evident is that if we don't kill ourselves in the next few centuries or millennia, almost mm. all humans that will ever exist will live in the future. Which brings us back to us in the present. We exist at a high point in human history, with incredible possibilities at our grasp. Technological, environmental, and societal. What we do matters for all the people who do not exist yet. So while it's not on vogue to think about humanity's long-term future with optimism, or to think about it at all, maybe this has given you a bit of perspective. If we screw up the present, so many people may never come to exist. Quadrillions of unborn humans are at our mercy. Even if we go with fairly conservative estimates, the unborn are by far the largest group of people and the most disenfranchised. Somebody who might be born in a thousand or even a million years deeply depends on us today for their existence. This is why it's important to think about the distant future and why our presence is so crucial, why it matters what we do today. One day, the last human will be born. We don't know when. But if we change our perspective from us living at the end of the human story to us living at the very beginning, we can not only build a wonderful world for us and for them, but also for countless numbers of others. Huge announcement. We're launching Kurzgesagt in six more languages. Arabic, Ooh. Brazilian Portuguese, French, Hindi, Japanese and Korean oh, on top of our English, German and Spanish channels. Bringing new perspectives and a love for science to as many people as possible. Nice. Especially to some languages that are underserved because it's not profitable to translate to. If enough people watch our new channels, we can hopefully run them for many years to come. This is where we need your help. It takes us a lot of time, effort and, yes, money to translate our videos properly and run so many channels. So, to make this sustainable, please help us spread the word. If you're native in one of these languages, share our videos on social media and tell your friends and family. Make people in your native language aware that it exists. This multi-language expansion is supported by Open Philanthropy, an organization that tries to do as much good as possible. They want to help us spread awareness of science and ideas for how you can help humanity thrive. Their values align with ours in many fundamental ways, so we're going to work with them on more projects in the future. So, yeah. please help us spread the word. And thank I'm you for watching. I'm spreading the word. That was a fascinating perspective. I have seen a few of the uh, Quartzkasaft in a nutshell videos, and some of them kind of have a tendency to, uh, you know, induce an existential crisis. This video was a lot more optimistic than I was expecting. Um, I, I do consider myself a bit of a nihilist. I do believe that our lives do not intrinsically have meaning and that in the grand scheme of things, we are very, very, very much insignificant. But I also believe that those ideas shouldn't be used as, as an excuse to become apathetic and to just not care about you know, your life and the impact that you're having on other people and on your immediate environment um, and to just give up and not even try. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, we are very insignificant and the things that we do on our planet or even within our solar system really are not going to have any effect on the rest of the universe. But when we bring that down into the smaller scale, we can and we do have an impact on the people around us and the things that we do collectively are going to determine the possibilities and the potential for the generations that come after us. I have come across people with this very doomsday mindset who believe that, you know, what's the point in trying to fix the issues on this planet when one day the planet's going to be uninhabitable and it's going to be destroyed by the sun at some point anyway, so why should we even try to fix it? I very much believe that the inevitable end of something shouldn't stop us from trying to make the most of it and trying to make it the best that it can be while it lasts, however long that may be. Okay, before I ramble on too long, <laughs> because I can and I will, let's finish this. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If there is anything else that you would like me to watch and react to and provide commentary on, please do let me know. There are quite a few Kurzgesagt videos that I haven't seen, so if you would be interested in seeing more of those, I would be happy to oblige. I hope you found this video thought-provoking. I sure did. Maybe we can start some discussions in the comments. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, you can subscribe if you want to. You don't have to. You're welcome here either way. And I will see you in the next one.